Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in Visual Basic and in this tutorial we're going to be going over option strict then message boxes and focus at the same time and the select case so let's get started so uh, I should have showed this to you in the last tutorial because it has to do with the data type conversion but I kinda of slipped my mind sorry about that uh, so what if you have whatever someone types in here conver uh, implicitly convert that into let's say a single but you assign it to a variable that's an integer. So allow me to change this to an integer. And it's not intentional. Maybe you did it by mistake. You didn't even realize that you were doing this. So here what we have is, let's say someone types in 4.3 for an example. Well, that's fine, right? This would be 4.3 because it's been converted to a single. But A is an integer. So what will happen? What do you think will happen if we print this on our label? So I'll click save and I'll build and run. I click in 4.3 and we get 4. Well that is what's called narrowing conversion and what option strict does is it disallows that. It will only allow widening conversion which is basically the other way around having a, an integer data, data type uh, allowed uh, to be implicitly converted into uh, any kind of decimal data type, such as single or double or decimal. Uh, so let's figure out how to turn that on. So one way of two ways that I know of is just to manu manually type it in here and it'll turn it on. And now notice how it's underlined and now it says option, option strict on disallows implicit conversions from single to integer. So it tells you the two data types that you're trying to convert to. Uh, another way of doing this is to go to project, go to the properties, and let's see, oh, um, go to compile here, then go to option strict, and as you can see the default is off, and that's why I had to do it manually. But you can do it here as well, just turn it to on, and then you won't need it in the other place. But, but I'm good, I have it on now. So here we go. So as you can see, it does not work. But if we change this back into a single, now it does work. And if we try doing it this way, in uh, going from an integer to uh, a decimal, then it's fine. We don't have that error because that's a widening conversion as opposed to narrowing conversion. So that's all. Now the next thing I would like to show you are both message boxes and hmm, focus and you know what I'm just gonna go right in the select case because I can pretty much do this all at the same time so let's make these all singles now now we did if statements before but there's actually a different way of handling well uh, decision making as well and that's with what's called the and I'm gonna get rid of this and that is what's wh what is called the select case in other programming languages this is known as the switch statement and it really does work the same way so what you do is you type in select case and whatever you want to pull. So I actually need to get rid of this. And then I'm going to copy this, or I'm going to cut this, excuse me, and type in your argument here. So I'm actually going to put parentheses around all of this. You don't have to. Visual Basic's nice that way, but I like to. And then we get an end select, so all the different cases we need to put in there. So this will look and convert whatever you type into a single, and then it will check for certain values. So for an example, we can type in case, and then whatever number you want to check for. So if we were doing, I don't know, grades, we could say case 70. And inside of this, we can type in label output dot text is equal to, I don't know, congratulations I uh, hope I spelled that right and then you can go on you can type in case 100 in case they got a hundred label output dot text is equal to uh, I don't know perfect score and and basically you could type in case else now case else now if you do not get one of these cases correct you may end up down here with one of these, one, this message box down here. 
So if you want another message to pop up, or if you don't have a catch, you can do what's optional, and that's a case else. So basically, if none of the, none of the above cases that you type in are true, it'll execute this one instead. So label output dot text is equal to you fail. So if I click save, and let's build this. So if I type in 70, it says congratulations. If I type in 100, it says perfect score. If I got 99, you fail. Yep. Well, that doesn't really work. Well, what if you want to check for a range? Well, what you can do is actually type in 299, and it will check for that particular range. Uh, everything from 70 to 99 is as easy as that. So if I click save, and I do this again, if I type in my 70, uh, I still get congratulations. If I type in 100, perfect score. If I type in 99, I still get congratulations. But if I type in 69, you fail. Now, what if now, um, well, uh, what if you want to work with strings instead? What if you want to make an, uh, uh, another case? Now, actually, I'm about to do this a little wrong, but you'll understand this in just a moment. And I make a string right there, and I'll type in label output dot text is equal to I don't know what what do we want the string to say? Hello. So you type in let's say you type in hello, and the response will be why hello to you too. Well, option strict just ruined what I wanted to tease you with. Um, because it says you can't convert from a string to a single, so gosh darn. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, you can check for strings, but you have to make sure that this isn't going to be a that this is not going to be a string, or this has to be a string too, not a number. So I have to type in str, and then if this is a string, all your cases must be strings, uh, except for the case else. That can be whatever. And the same with the numbers. You have to make sure all of them are numbers. So in order to show this to you, I actually need to turn this off. There we go. Uh, which is very, very dangerous for reasons like this. So allow me to type in hello. And if I click that, it says why hello to you too. So you can do strings as well. So I'm actually going to get rid of all of this. Uh, make this back into a single. And allow me to turn option strict back on. Because, well, you really got to see option strict in uh, in use. So that's the really, really great with option strict. Make sure this is this, wow. I didn't even think about this. This is a much better example. Uh, anyways, now the next thing I like to show you are message boxes. Did you know that you don't have to have message boxes only show up if uh, if you have an error or something? You can have them type in created at any time, um, just any time really. Uh, you can do it when your form loads, just whenever. So in here, let's just do do one for in here. So let's have the congratulations written out first before we have a message box created. So we can type in message box dot show, and then when inside, the first set of information is the text we have pop up, and let's have it put down. Um, I'm proud of you. And then the next one, uh, our the little information that would go in here on the little window we'll have it say information then the next thing we can have is the message message box buttons let's go with just an okay and now there's actually others you can uh, throw in there you can throw in icons as well and this will actually affect the sound that comes out so let's actually start with error and then there's actually one more you can throw in there and that's the default buttons. I never do that. That just shows which one's highlighted by default. And the one, for an example, button one means the one on the uh, furthest left, while three would be the one on the furthest right. But uh, let's just do that. Let's just throw in one. Why not? And I want to keep this last parenthesis at the end there. So I click save, and when I open this up, let's type in 75. And we get, I'm proud of you. But did you hear that little error, that little err uh, with the X? That's because the icon corresponds with whatever sound comes out. 
we don't want that sound to come out if we, you know, passed. So what you can do is change the icon from error to, well, whatever you want. Check out all the sounds. Let's try information. So if I type in 75 now, let's listen to the sound. That's better, right? It really sounds like it's talking to us. I like that. I'm proud of you. And then the label is still filled with congratulations as well. And if we go down to like 68, we don't have a message box because, well, we didn't put a message box for the case else down there. But you can do that for whatever you'd like. And that's all the different pieces of information that you could put in for your message box. And the last thing I wanted to show you, I believe, was just focus. And uh, there's actually one more thing I'll show you as well. And that's how to have a text box filled in by default or something checked by default. But we'll learn more about that when we learn about controls for the graphical user interface. Uh, basically, let's just, what if we want a uh, default message to pop right here, just to already be there? Uh, what you can do is just double click on your form if you haven't already. You'll go to your form load subroutine. And this should usually be at the top, but uh, I'll just cut it. Control X is to cut. And because I'm a bit OCD like that, I have to have everything organized. There we go. And then let's have label output dot text. Let's have it say type here. Whoops. So that's really nice. So if I load the application, oh my bad. I put it in the label instead of the text box. Can't type in there. There we go. There you go, now it says type here, there. So that's really nice. You can also add focus to something. So for an example, what if someone types something in like this and, I don't know, you want to put focus. If they click the button, what if you want to put focus back to the text box? And maybe you want to reset whatever was in the text box as well. So let's just use the case else. What you could do is, let's type in, hmm, text input dot text. So whatever you type there, will then become blank or you know what let's have it say type here again let's let's put it back there and you can also put text input dot focus and what that will do is put the focus on the text box and you'll see what I mean by that so bear in mind all this will only work for that case else so type here let's type in I don't know 67 and now it says you fail and this went back to type here and the focus is there so you don't have to click it again and you can also do that for the form load as well uh, to already have the blinker the the cursor already there and that's about all I wanted to show you for this tutorial a bunch of different little things but uh, fairly pretty important as well so I hope this tutorial was helpful for you and remember uh, always go back to your textbook make sure you have one to check anything I, I might have left out um, but for this I believe I did get everything so I don't think you'll have to worry about this tutorial. This was pretty good. And uh, I'll see you next time.